Good morning. A <coughs> warm welcome to every one of you and a special welcome to any visitors uh, who is with us this morning. There will be tea and coffee after the service. Please do come along uh, for that. Um, no other intimations to make, so let us uh, begin our service. A call to worship comes from Psalm 92. How good it is to give thanks to you, O Lord, to sing in your honor, O Most High God, to proclaim your constant love every morning and your faithfulness every night, with the music of stringed instruments and with melody on the harp. Your mighty deeds, O Lord, make me glad. Because of what you have done, I sing for joy. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, uh, young and old alike, we come to worship you. We want to show our love for you in response to your love. On this day you entered into Jerusalem showing that you are the true king, the king who is going to lay his life not only for us but for the entire the world to save them from their sins so that they can be your children. Lord we thank you that we belong to you and we are acutely aware of our failings, our wrongdoings. We continue to go astray and we do our own things, ignoring your commandments and your word. And yet we know that when we come to you and ask for your forgiveness, you're ready to forgive us. Lord, we seek your forgiveness this morning, they give for forgiveness this morning and we ask you to be with us as we remember the events of the Palm Sunday. We pray for our children as they participate in this service. We want to give all the glory and honor to your name. Receive our prayer and bless us. For we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us stand together, if we can, and worship God uh, by singing Mission Praise number 575, Rejoice the Lord is King. Good morning, everyone. Our Sunday School are going to be leading the children's address this morning for our Palm Sunday service, and we'd like to begin with a reading this morning from Zachariah, and I'd like to ask Katrina to come up to begin, please. Reading from Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, the future king. Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look at your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay, so we're in, we're in for a treat now, um, follows our sketch, and our sketch this morning is taken from a book by the Reverend James Martin, my friend Bobby. So I'm going to set the scene for you to prepare you first of all. Um, Bobby and his dad are in the country, and they come across something that Bobby hasn't seen before. That's all I'm going to tell you, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Dad, what's that? Dad, what's in it with that 
We're going to freeze the frame now, boys and girls, because Bobby's dad's correct. It was the first Palm Sunday, and Jesus wanted to enter the city of Jerusalem in a way that he would show the world that he was the king of love and peace. And the best way he could think of to do that was to ride in on the back of a donkey. So this is where we need your help now. Alexander, I'm going to ask you to come up first if that's all right. We've got a few people off today, so we've been very fortunate that we've got people that have stepped in at the last minute. Right, Alexander? Good boy, you come over to this side. Well done. Okay. And boys and girls, when you've got your palm branch, I want you to come up and stand at the front. Okay, so it was the first Palm Sunday and hundreds of people lined the road shouting and cheering as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey's back. Can you remember what we're shouting and cheering? Hosanna! Hosanna! A bit louder, you stop me. And boys and girls, the reason Bobby doesn't mind being called a donkey was the fact that he now knows what a great service the donkey played to Jesus. The donkey was a very humble creature. Put up your hand if you can tell our congregation this morning. What do we think the word humble means? Hey, Jessica. Um, funny? Well, he did. Bobby did think that the donkey looked funny but humble, it's quite a tricky word. Uh, obedient. He certainly was obedient. Wise? Well, I think he could have been wise as well. I think Joshua told us last week what he thought humble meant. Let's see if he can share that with us. Um, the donkey wasn't really like showing off. Like He wasn't saying, like, oh, Jesus is on my back. The donkey didn't think he was very important, did he? The donkey was a very humble creature. But what we need to think about is no matter how big or how small or how unimportant we might seem to be, we can all be of great service to Jesus if we let him use us. And we're going to sing about this triumphant entry now in our song next. So I'm going to give 
Bill the Wink for the music. Okay, we'll wait for our introduction. And our song's called We Sing Hosanna. I think you'll agree that was wonderful. Um, well done to everybody. <laughs> and now to finish up this morning, um, our Pam Sunday prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come together on this Pam Sunday to give praise and to give thanks for the love and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who chose to complete your work so that all believers may be saved through him. We humbly come before you today, knowing that we do not deserve such an act of love, but that your grace knows no bounds and your love is never ending. We ask that you give us the wisdom to recognize your will for us and the courage to follow it through so that we may bring glory to you. We pray for the church all over the world and the people who work hard to serve you through it. In particular, we pray for the many organisations and people who give up their time to help the poor, the starving and the oppressed. May the Holy Spirit keep them safe and guide them to continue to do your will. We pray for our own church, our minister, our congregation and our families this Easter season. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct us and give us peace. We ask that you draw us close in times of sickness and in times of sorrow, and also in times of joy. 
We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, now, uh, as you go to your Sunday school, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, with your families, this day and through this week. Amen. again. Our adult reading is also from Zechariah chapter 9. This is a prophecy that was in the Old Testament. It's from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. The future king. Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Lord says, I will remove the war chariots from Israel and take the horses from Jerusalem. The bows used in battle will be destroyed. Your king will make peace among the nations. He will rule from sea to sea, from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. And then we read in the New Testament in Matthew, and it's Matthew chapter 21, and that can be found on page 30 or thereabouts on the Bible. Is it not on? Can you hear now? It's Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11 on page 30. And this is entitled, The Triumphant Entry into Jerusalem. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her coat beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, tell him. The master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them onto the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind him began to shout, Praise, praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds all answered. Amen. We are used to seeing Palm Sunday as a day of great celebration. And indeed it was and is. But perhaps not for the reasons we usually think. We associate the day with Jesus being king and riding into Jerusalem as a king with, you know, children uh, waving palm uh, branches in his honor and welcoming him. The gospel story, uh, in fact, tells a slightly different tale. It tells a tale of great expectations and hosannas on Sunday. And also the acclamation of crucify him on Friday and perhaps in some cases by the very same people who welcomed Jesus on Sunday. It is a sobering reminder about what happens to a group of very, very religious people when you raise their expectations of a major triumph at the beginning of a week 
and by the end of the week dash those expectations so that even the inner circle of Jesus male disciples have denied deserted and betrayed their own master by Thursday evening handing him over to the authorities so that he can be crucified question is what accounts for this incredible turn of events all in one week now whatever it is we need to realize from the outset that Jesus did not come to meet our expectations or those of his followers who were with him all the time he however came to meet our needs he did not come to finish our enemies and lift us high he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom of sin you know for the root of it all the real heart of the human dilemma is not our political problems but our sinfulness as jesus says in mark 7 from out of the heart comes war adultery murder slander and all manner of human misbehavior the problem then and now was not chiefly how well the borders of the land were protected from other nations or the occupiers the problem was the unprotected borders of the human heart and let us now turn to look at, at the reading that we have had this morning especially from Matthew chapter 21 to see more clearly what i'm saying so first of all it is notable that this is the only time in all the gospels that jesus elevates himself above the crowd but instead instead of doing so by mounting on a war horse he gets on a donkey and rides into town you know indicating among other things that he comes in peace and not with sword to humiliate his foes Matthew rightly quotes from Zechariah as we heard and to we read this um it says rejoice rejoice people of Zion shout for joy you people of Jerusalem look your king is coming to you he comes triumphant and victorious and then he goes on to say something very important he says but humble and riding on a donkey and a colt the foal of a donkey the lord says i will remove the war chariots from israel and take the horses of jerusalem the bows used in battle will be destroyed your king will make peace among the nations he will rule from sea to sea from the river euphrates to the ends of the earth he will cut off the war chariots <coughs> and war horse from jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off you know he shall command shalom as peace peace to the nations you know but the uh, there is the irony and the crowds don't get it take for example the the waving of the palm branches this had a specific symbolic meaning it was used to celebrate the maccabeans victory less than 2 centuries before maccabeans were a, a group of people who um stirred up the uprising and then threw away the foreign forces when the jewish maccabees military 
conquered and retook <laughs> Jerusalem from other nations, that is when they started celebrating with palm trees in their hands. It was what the crowds hoped for when they saw Jesus riding into town on a donkey, which reminded them of the King David or King Solomon or their ceremonial ridings to Zion. They were used to, they were remembering the events of the past. This time they remember that, they celebrate that way, except they don't pay the attention to the kind of animal Jesus was riding on. Nor apparently did they share Matthew's interpretation of the event in the light of Zechariah 9. It seems clear that Jesus even raised the hopes and expectations of his disciples that he was coming to town as the new sheriff, so to speak the ruler to take over Jerusalem. And then, when everything took a very different turn on Thursday, the disillusionment became very profound. You know, I love the story of the two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. You know, you remember that in Luke chapter 24 after Jesus had been raised. Um, they were walking on the road and uh, Jesus come close to them, walks by them, goes with them to the town they were going to. And ironically, they don't recognize Jesus. You know what they said when Jesus asked, why are you so sad? They said, we had hoped, past tense, we had hoped that he would be the one who would redeem Israel. But he was crucified and that crucifixion took away the rumor of Jesus being the victorious king coming to take over. You see, no one was looking for a crucified Messiah in Jesus' day. The truth is, Jesus didn't come to be that kind of, uh, of king. He would run, uh, you know, the, the, the one who would run the Romans away from Jerusalem and bring back the former glory of Israel. He came to die on a cross even for the sins of the enemies of Israel. Still to this day, we have a very different time, you know, a, a, a different time here, but difficult time also in understanding this story. Still to this day, we tend to think that military solution to our problems are the final answer. And we continue to hear about wars, people running over and trying to uh, subdue other people group. The last week of Jesus' life tells us that is not the solution. You see the line, blessed is the one who comes to Jerusalem in the name of the Lord, was what the pilgrims sang when they came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover or any other um, festival. They came to, to, to Jerusalem singing, blessed in the name, uh, blessed is who uh, comes in the name of the Lord. But here it takes on a special significance because this time their king really has come to town. This time the ultimate son of David really had arrived and the vast majority of them didn't even know. And even if they did, they had a very different vision of what sort of king he should be than Jesus had. 
And if we want to understand why the original disciples deserted, denied and betrayed Jesus, well some of them no doubt had the hopes of the Zealots. You know, that's, that was what a group of people in Jerusalem who wanted always to, to throw away the, the foreign forces, the occupiers. And they wanted to bring back Israel's former glory. They wanted to restore their status. And that is political status. Hope that these people hope that Jesus, especially after cleansing the temple, would then kick the Romans out of town and begin his own rule. Remember, Jesus came to clean uh, the, the, the temple. He threw away all the, uh, the people uh, who were doing business in the temple. And these disciples hoped that Jesus would do the same with Romans. However, Jesus bitterly disappointed both the hopeful crowd of pilgrims and his own disciples during this holy week. And when you dash people's hope or highest expectations that severely, it is not a surprise that you end up on a cross by the end of that week. Today when we hear the loud hosannas and sing with joy about the coming of our king, the prince of peace, will we remember his words when he said, if anyone would come after me, let them take their cross and follow me. Follow me all the way to Golgotha, where he was crucified. Jesus the came, 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 came to meet our deepest needs, our needs for salvation more than temporary political solutions, our needs to humble ourselves in the sight of God instead of, instead of trying to exalt ourselves above other nations, our need to let God be King and Lord over our lives, not ourselves, not our political leadership, not any other human being other than Jesus himself. What is really needed, desperately needed by all of us and by them and by our nation is repentance and embracing of Jesus of Nazareth, the one and only Prince of Peace. So let me ask this, what expectations do we have of Jesus? You know, we come to church with various different expectations. You know, many a time people have high expectations uh, of Jesus and church, thinking if they become Christians or if they, they, they embrace the, the community of faith, that all their problems will go away. They come to Jesus in order to use him so that they can have a good time, a good life. So much so, sometimes we just come to church to take another box and saying, well, that's what I've done my bit and now it's Jesus' turn to do the rest and make my life comfortable. You know, by the excitement of people, they make Jesus fulfill their wishes. And if we come with that kind of expectation, or the expectations, it is so easy to get it wrong, just as people of Jerusalem and that day got it wrong, absolutely wrong. Even the disciples got it wrong. And sometimes we who are in leadership and especially some of the 
very high enthusiastic evangelicals raise people's expectations. If you give this much money to to certain charity or church, you're going to get 70 fold. You're going to get this, you're going to get blessed and so on and so forth. Raising their expectations high and then not seeing how these expectations can be dashed because they're wrong, wrong from the beginning. It's so easy to get it wrong. So what do we do when we got it wrong? Well, the good news is this. The disciples got it wrong and yet Jesus so accepted them still offered them that life, still offered them the opportunity to see his purpose of coming into the world. And if we have got it wrong, there's no need to be too dejected. We can still come to him and ask him to reveal himself to us, show his purpose in our life and let him be the king of life. Let him be the Lord of our life and not ourselves. Peter denied him, deserted him. And yet he was the one Jesus made leader of all his disciples. So let us revisit our expectations of Jesus. Let us revisit of our purpose of being people of faith. And then, if we find ourselves on the wrong side, the opportunity is this. Come and recognize Jesus as a Prince of Peace, as the one who came to give us inner peace. Accept him as a king of our life. Emulate him as the Prince of Peace. So that we can continue to have this joy, a real joy of heart, which does not depend on circumstances, which is constant and continue to push us through life despite our circumstances. My prayer is that during this week we really feel that peace in our hearts. We accept Jesus as our King as we continue to reflect during this week on the events of the Holy Week. Amen. Let us now bring our offerings to the Lord and as we do so we sing mission praise number 473 my hope is built in nothing nothing less let us pray <clears throat> Lord God we thank you for this morning thank you that we have reflected on the events of this Palm Sunday Lord, sometimes we can picture ourselves in among the crowds, singing Hosanna, being excited, having our hopes and expectations raised up to the level where we sometimes don't see the real purpose of your coming. And yet we know that you have spoken to us, you continue to speak to us, to reveal yourself, to show us the purpose of your coming, coming to this, coming to this world and coming in our lives. Lord, we ask you to help us be realistic, but at the same time hopeful, hopeful of your grace for us. Showing us that 
you still want us, you still want to walk with us, you still want to take us through all kinds of situations because you are our king, you are the prince of peace. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings that you continue to give us. You give us what we don't deserve. We thank you for our families, we thank you for our friends. We thank you that we don't need to look for things and to, to look that what will we eat next day. We thank you that you have given us so much. We bring these offerings in response to your blessings to us with thankful heart. Knowing that these offerings may be used for those who don't feel comfortable, who don't feel peaceful in their hearts. May these offerings and their use bring lasting peace to them. Peace that comes only from Jesus himself. While we talk about peace, Lord, we are aware that there are many people who don't feel peaceful and those who don't want to remain peaceful. We remember the areas of Iraq, Syria, <coughs> Yemen, Libya, Pakistan, Thailand and many, many other places where your people continue to suffer and suffer exclusively because of their faith. Sometimes they rightly ask, why them? But Lord, we do pray that you bring the peace, peace in their hearts. And as they reflect on the events of Palm Sunday, may they come to know you as the king of their lives, the prince of peace. We also pray for those who inflict atrocities, who hurt other people, who bring grief and pain to others. Lord, we pray that they may come to know that settling political differences are not going to bring peace. May they come to know you as their Lord and Savior too. Lord, help us to be agents of your peace. For we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now conclude our service and we sing this time, make way, make way. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always.